Well, Max Zapata is sitting in for Gina Grad doing the news. Thanks. This is half of the show brought to you by SimplySafeAdam.com, JB Weld, World's Strongest Bond, and Geico.com. All right, let's get in some news, man. Let's. The Adam Carolla Show. Your source for the news that matters. Or random stories that piss Adam off. We're going to start off with a story that matters. Sylvester Stallone, he was in Cannes last week for a, a junket about Rambo 5, Last Blood. Trailer last just came Blood. Out. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> First Blood, Last Blood. Yeah, makes sense. Uh-huh. So, so while he was doing the uh, Q&A, he was asked by an audience member, of course, to reflect on Cobra. <laughs> and uh, Stallone responded, that was what if Bruce Springsteen had a gun. That was rock and roll meets drama. That should have been another franchise because the character was so cool and I blew it. My personal life got in the way, but we're trying to bring it back as a streaming TV series. Oh. Bring out the zombie squad. I'm long gone, but the idea is really good. Well, again, once Lego the movie came out, it was great. There are no more proclamations of what will work and what won't work. Right. Um, Cobra, it's kind of weird the relationship that uh, Sly has with Cobra. Of course, I've spoken to him about it in person. Cobra is a comically, laughably bad movie with horrible plot points, and it's basically an insane movie. That's why I like it. But mostly, I make, I'm t- making fun of it 1,000%. You cannot believe that this movie was made. It is Not laughably... Made, like a, a tentpole A-list star. Right. Huge it's just movie. filled with like stupid scenes that mean nothing. I mean, it is some of the worst movie making ever. <laughs> um, but that's why I like it, yeah. of course. But let's not confuse it with a good movie. Yeah. Now, it's good if you're super high on some edibles and I'm in the room with you. <laughs> but other than that, that you're, specific instance. you're not going to enjoy it because it's laughably bad. Like they, and there's just bizarre scenes in it that make no sense at all. Like, And it's all full of tropes. Like that thing all through those 80s movies, like super hot model. She she fears for her life. We got a bad cop on the inside. We don't know who it is. Then the one single good looking cop goes, I'll take the hot blonde to our mountain hideaway. Mm-hmm. You know, LAPD has a couple of places in Aspen that they keep just <laughs> yeah. in case. They We're have much to hide better model. one on one than we are with the entire squad. Right. And somehow she won't be safe in LA, but if yeah. we can get to this rural mountain we're community, home we're home free. And then the one chick who's a turncoat who is working in the operator's room has to go with them. I'm not sure why, why Shirley needs to go with well, them to the mountain. I think she volunteers. Not that I've seen the movie a couple I don't, of times. I've but. never been inside the LAPD, but I don't think you get someone from the secretarial pool to leave town with the two detectives and the one chick that's being hunted by the homicidal maniac biker gang. But uh, it's a ridiculously, comically bad movie with lots of fire. Hmm. It's lots of fire. Um, but it shouldn't be confused with a good movie. But you can still put any name on anything and, and you know, d- Absolutely. D- maybe d- they, dust it off. Maybe they try to have some fun with it. You know, a lot of things that come back, they kind of make fun of themselves. Because back then they were taking themselves very seriously. Yeah. But it, they can they it, can kind of make like it. Like a self-aware comedic. 21 it, Jump Street version right. yes. of Cobra. It reminds me very much of my junior year and... North Hollywood High and the Richard Kim incident. Oh, that's people right. still that talk Kim. about it. Yeah. Richard yeah. Kim, Oof. the Richard Kim incident. I thought incident. we were bringing that up. Oh, geez. Ugh. If we find, I don't know, North Hollywood yearbook from 1981, you find a picture of Richard Kim. So Richard Kim was a guy, he was probably Chinese guy, and he was like, I don't know, struggled with the language a little bit, had a big wide head, you know. One of these guys you know, carried a briefcase in 1981 kind of guys, you know. How trouble assimilating. Yeah, and... Is Kim a Chinese name, Chris? I think it's Korean. I think he was Korean, yeah. Oh, something he was, weird. Something yeah. weird. He was, I think he was Korean. <laughs> oh, even though back then, it's like Chinese, yeah, Korean, right. Japanese, mm-hmm. Dirty Filipino. Knees. They're all the yeah. same. Look they're all, they're all the same. They're all the same to me, but... All right, so he was Korean. So uh, he got up there. He was running for president, even though... Nobody really knew him or liked him or anything, but he was running for president, student body president. We had the assembly in the basketball gym, and he, like, got – it was his time to walk up to the podium and give his little speech. And 
just because we were screwy kids, he got up there and like somebody when he got to the thing, he's like, "If I'm elected," and somebody yelled like, "We love you, Richard!" And then uh, he was like, "Okay, thank you." And then someone else was laughing. It's ironically, like, oh, right. Richard. And then at a certain point, I was there working everyone along. I was like, "Richard, Richard, <laughs> Richard!" And this That's entire Richard. gymnasium <laughs> oh. breaks out totally ironically because this guy nobody knew who he was and he had no charisma and no no reason to be student body president. Like when you got best hair, how dare you? I <laughs> earned that award. Kids are cruel. <laughs> And every once in a while, they will they will do something very ironically. So the oh. entire gym broke out in a chant of Richard. And as it's caught on, it caught on. And, you know, everyone's bored off their ass and just looking for a way to entertain themselves. Of course, Richard, he's just trying to silence the crowd. He doesn't right. – he's, he's – his arms folded like Mussolini, and he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. I, I, I know you love me now, yeah. but come on, back to order. And in his mind, he's captivated the imagination of North Hollywood High. <laughs> and, but the reality is, is we're all making fun of him, ironically, oh. Oh. and he doesn't know what's going on. And it's like they had to get the principal like on the blower and tell everyone to calm down. And everyone like calm down and get everyone to get settled in. And then he'd come back up to the podium and go, if I'm elected, everyone's like, Richard, Richard, Richard. And, Richard, Richard. Richard. and, and I did probably had to just cut the whole thing short. So Amazing. what I want to say to Sly about cobras, this is the Richard Kim incident. We don't love cobra. This is bad. Cobra. 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 I still will be At watching. Con, yeah. can they start to chant cobra? <laughs> I had a bizarrely similar incident in my high school for elections. You know, they give the speeches, like you said. Our version of Richard Kim, I forget. Some Someone from high school uh, tweet me and tell me who it was because our version of Richard Kim got up to give a speech and he was droning on for what felt like hours, probably, you know, 10 minutes or you know, whatever it was. And at a certain point, mid-speech, he your, was, your grandma yelled out, tell us what you were wearing. <laughs> at a certain point, mid, I'm trying to set the table. At a certain point, mid-speech, like... People start applauding, and they start applauding. Oh, right. He's talking, and it's getting louder. And he's, he's trying to talk, and they just clap him off the stage. Like, all right, that was good. You're done. <laughs> good. And he just kind of, kind of like took his notes and left. Yeah. Same. I had the same thing. You Kim, had the same thing. I think he's Asian. Uh, he is Asian. I don't know if he's Korean or not, but his name was Kim Dow. You and had a Kim thing. situation. Kim too? situation. He would he would come out, and everybody would get on their feet, and they would just go nuts for this guy. He won. He, everybody loved him because of it, though. Uh, like I, Kim I found Dow. out about him. He was older than me, so I didn't even know who he was. But uh, as as the election happened, everybody loved him, and he was just abno- yeah. admonished. And in a very similar story, oh, I Jesus. grew up on the bayou in the south, and we didn't know anyone named Kim. Sure, <laughs> don't be a one upper, like I said before. <laughs> Kaylin, you got to look for a yearbook picture. Oh, I got it. It's coming. Oh, you got Richard Kim. <laughs> you guys are going to You guys will be really satisfied when you see what, ha- what Richard Kim. Kaylin's a really good producer. Yeah, he is. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. He, 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 he fits. So I'm saying about it. breath of fresh air. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, too. It should it's stay a new there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the show feels yeah. invigorated. I got some pep in my step. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I wanna, yeah, it's like I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to come to work. Yeah. While he's looking for Richard Kim, a man outside of the White House yesterday, set himself on fire. He's now been pronounced dead. Jesus. Yeah, so the Secret Service and Park Police respond to a report of a guy who set himself on fire. Officers extinguished the blaze, and a police later identified him as Arnav Gupta, 33, of Maryland. He was last seen by his family. He left his home earlier that day, and uh, they, they, were, they sent out a release saying, police are concerned for his physical and emotional welfare. People have no idea why he did it. Uh, there's video and pictures. It's pretty crazy. It, just imagine a walking fireball. Um, yeah, and he, he just died. And nobody knows why. His actions remain unknown. The investigation is being handled by the police right now. But no, nobody knows why. Oh, there's, oh, a, there's a picture. I know. I don't want to see it. Yeah. It, it, it hurts. Uh, is this man on fire? What yeah, just it? set himself on fire. Nobody knows why it's... Uh, so I'm just... always <laughs> fascinated on how people kill themselves. You know, with with the advent of all the drugs, pharmaceuticals, and booze. You know what I mean? And shotguns and crossbows. That whole thing of the burning heart. <laughs> Great song, actually. Speaking of slide, I'll take this over. I the tiger any day. Fight me. <laughs> At him.
Do you have any Richard Kim photos? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. You can see him. He's got like he's got the uh, '60s stockbroker hairdo. Mm. He's wearing the rayon <laughs> jacket and a clip-on tie. It's like this is 1981. This is not a cool. You know, Duran Duran is what's happening now. You know, yeah. so Richard Kim, <laughs> Union of the Snake. Yeah, this is Richard <laughs> Kim. So obviously, it was totally ironic. And but that Jim would not shut up. <laughs> And once we did it, once it was done once, then it was on. It would no one would ever stop. You can't police a uh, fifteen hundred kids in right, the crowd. Yeah. And of course, me and Ray and my buddies were spearheading the entire thing. And people were stamping. <laughs> they were stomping on the wooden bleachers. You know, Richard, Richard. he was just like giving the peace sign, like Nixon, like it was like waving. Like, but who could get mad at that? I mean, you guys are cheering for him. It's it's positive. Well, what it did is it completely disrupted. <laughs> the event so that other people that were behind him couldn't give their speeches and it upended the entire thing and we didn't we didn't care and i don't know if he ever even was elected to i was gonna to say anything. did he win i don't we weren't interested in any follow-up of any kind he's the mayor of calabasas now. we just yeah. had we just had that part Fair and i to vote. again i'm sure he never had any idea that this was all done completely ironically right. i don't think the asians have the ironic gene mm. Mm. We don't. You don't, right? No. So this guy burned himself? <laughs> yeah, he burned, <laughs> burned himself in. <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll find a motive, but... The second burning song for Rocky mm-hmm. Four. And it was the... Uh, uh, last month, another guy set himself on fire outside the White House as well, but that one wasn't life-threatening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That wasn't life-threatening? That's what. Yeah, that's what it says. Last, uh, last month, somebody else tried that, too. But there, there's a whole thing about when you set yourself on fire, right? You're sending a certain message. Yeah, isn't it? Besides, what, what is the message? Well, you know, when people jump off of the Golden mm. Gate Bridge, that's supposed to mean something. And when people do the burning themselves, mm. I, I don't know what it is. I'm, but you shouldn't do it. I when I heard the story, the documentary is a jump leaper, jumper, the something, bridge, the bridge. It's a the great bridge. documentary. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a downer, but it, uh, mm. do people know what this is? It's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a the, documentary about folks, X amount of people yeah. kill themselves they every year cameras. by jumping That's off the Golden Gate Bridge for a bridge. year. Right. Yeah. And uh, there was one or two people that survived mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. fall. And uh, their first impulse, but this could be just purely physiological or chemical or something. But the first, everyone who jumps off something and s- tries to kill themselves but survives, their first thought when they let go of the railing and they're 15 inches away from ever coming back was, oh, shit. Yeah. I, sh- right. I wish I was back on that bridge. <laughs> now, that could be a chemical thing. Yeah, it could be a yeah, survival but instinct. still, I don't like that. I wouldn't like that thought, like, on the way down. Like, oh, this is a poor life death choice. I've made a mistake. <laughs> I've made a mistake. <laughs> I've yeah. made a horrible mistake. Splash. Yeah. yeah. Well, we went to the Golden Gate Bridge uh, last month, and we were peering over the – and the, every time I do that, the first thing I think of is, oh, man, people jump off this. What yeah. Like? What would it be like to jump off this? Why aren't we doing the news? It's this kind of part thing where it's like, <laughs> my feeling if I found the guy I lived is, I want to hire you if you don't try to kill yourself again or certainly, or do it during a weekend, you know. Not, Strong-willed. Not, yeah. Because there's something about it that I appreciate. I don't think w- women probably don't do that as much it as was, men. As I recall, it was majority men. Yeah. You know, one or two women. Mm-hmm. I know two women who jumped off the Greater New Orleans Bridge, killed themselves. Two women. Really? Was, yeah. I couldn't handle the breakup? Yeah. What? Yeah. I couldn't handle it. Then, one Vinny. was actually a student of mine from Newman School from my first year of teaching. Jesus. Beautiful girl, very wealthy family, seemed perfectly normal, and they knew she was having some trouble, and the way she did it was she woke up really early, left the house, had a cabbie meet her outside, and she said she wanted to get pictures from the top of the bridge at sunrise, and she had a camera with her and the whole thing. And the guy says, well, we can't stop on the bridge. And she says, yeah, but can you slow down enough for me to get a few shots? And he said, sure. And uh, she kept going, slow down. slow." Down. I-, I can almost get it. And as soon as he almost got to a stop, she jumped out. Didn't, not even a second thought, just threw herself over. Jeez. Jesus Yeah, Christ. it's heavy on the cabbie, man. Mm. Yeah, it, it was rough. You know, th- I mean, in the other one, she drove onto the bridge and uh, stopped her car. Guy behind her was like, hey, what the F? What, what are you doing? She got out. She walked. She's looking at the guy as she walks behind her car. One foot, the other foot, gone. Wow. Boom. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, I wonder if that guy thinks she was just going to work and he caused it because he <laughs> gave her the bird or honked his horn. That's yeah. a weird thing. It, it is a weird it's thing, thing right? You, yeah. You're watching someone just moments before they're dead. All right. Happier news. What do you got, Max Pata? <laughs> Uh, happier news. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, there's not, not a ton of happy news, but Disney, mm-hmm. uh, their CEO, Bob Iger, uh, told Reuters on Wednesday that it will be, quote, <laughs> Reuters. Reuters, excuse me. That will be, quote, mm. very difficult for the media company to keep filming in Georgia if a new abortion law takes effect. He says, I think many people who work for us will not want to work there, and we will have to heed their wishes in that regard. Right now, we're watching it very carefully. Now, they filmed uh, so far. They filmed in Georgia, Black Panther, Avengers Endgame. So it'd be a blow to the state's oh, effort yeah. to create a production <laughs> jobs. You don't shoot Black Panther in Montana. <laughs> no, like, no. We need extras. <laughs> well, you're shit out of luck, Bronco. Yeah. There's don't make two, me go to South Dakota. We got we got two racist guys and a, a guy does snowmobile repair <laughs> and two loggers. But that is it. I guess we can go to Wyoming. Good luck during the the village rally scene. Yeah, you got to you got to work it. You got to work Georgia. Yeah. I. Uh, I tend to think I think all this stuff is sort of like Chick-fil-A like people go people don't want this and people don't want that and then people go fuck it you got a money you got a gig or I want a Chick-fil-A or I'm at the fucking airport or fuck it it just it just sort of goes away well and the if- difference I think I think the difference is there aren't a lot of chick other like options to Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A is fucking amazing oh, for yeah. a reason. There are a lot of other options for filming. Like we talked about how you know the, the the model doesn't always work for the state because there's always another state or another place offering incentives. There's always a New in Mexico. Well, there's always a summer. yeah, I, and, and that's true. And who knows? They'll still look whenever they do. Black Panther 3, everyone will forget about it. They'll do whatever makes the most sense yeah, yeah. from a cost-effective standpoint. Everyone does have a chicken burger now. I'm not an expert at this. Or a chicken sandwich. They offer it. They somehow just can't get that Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. part. Have you been to Chick-fil-A? I prob- it's pretty fucking good. I, yeah. I, I, I probably have. Um, we'll share a cheat meal there. One there's it's, a, it's Chick-fil-A for a reason. <laughs> there's a couple of airports... Oh, yeah? That are like trying to ban Chick fil A. Fuck you guys, What's wrong by with the Chick-fil-A? way. I've never been, but what? It's a fast food, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like fast food that people like it. They like it at airports, and they're owners religious. And he's yeah. against gay marriage. And so, whoever airport, I think it's Buffalo or something, and maybe another San Antonio or something like that, because they're fucking woke heroes, think uh, it's a good idea to ban a business from being in their airport, which. Uh, Look, the deal is the owner's allowed to have whatever thoughts he has. He's not allowed to impose that on the public. Then you can start your banning. So if the owner is Christian and he's against gay marriage... That's his business. If he doesn't serve gay couples, well, then now we've that gotten was my to question. a different... Does he, no, does he, he doesn't serve? do anything. The fucking thought police don't <laughs> like the idea that this guy has thoughts. So he's an American. It's a free country. He's got a thought. Well, yet. Yeah, but the super woke people, I him. think in New Jersey and maybe another airport, are like, we're not going to let you open your business here. And the people who are uh, up in arms over Chick Fil A will have no trouble going to In and Out, and they are just as religious. If not yeah. more. they put yeah. Bible verses on their cups. In and Out is religious. You ever been? Oh, you yeah. ever seen the bottom of the cups? They have Bible like, verses yeah. on the bottom. I don't get of the, the cups. cups. I just get the burger. And like, oh, like you're John not aware of this. No, I'm not aware. I'm, you don't okay. order the cup of meat. <laughs> <laughs> cup of meat. You give the signal, you take the two fingers, and you yeah. put it on top of your forearm, and the guy knows yeah. what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, because they have about. a big secret menu, Animal right? style. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're religious, and uh, they have their ideas, and they make a good burger, and I'm only eating their burger. Mm. I do not have to. They're not imposing anything on me, and they're not. They're not making any protocols or procedures, or they're t- they're not telling me anything. They're just making yeah. burgers, so I'll eat them if I like. Buffalo and San Antonio, both go. airports, if I outlawed Chick Fil A, I hope they get the shit suit out of them. You're not allowed to do that. They're doing themselves a disservice to you. I was say. People like Chick Fil A. Like, what are you fucking with the people who come to the airport for? All right. Anyway, not that they <laughs> care either. They're just making one of those. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's no that he took a weird stand because he never said that I feel this way or Disney feels this way. It's, it's the people who work for us wouldn't want to work there, and we got to we got to have. Their I bag. bet they will work there if there's money to be made. That's yeah, it's bottom I, line. I find that's how the world works. All right, what else we got? Max All Bauer. right, a Floridian woman mm. was charged with domestic battery um, after punishing her stepson for violating his curfew. She was whipping him with a belt. <laughs> The, the issue is the guy is 26. The, the mm. stepson's 26 years old. 
mom's a stepmom's 42. She called the victim after midnight and asked stepmom. him. Stepmom. Yeah, stepmom. Wow. wow. 42-year-old stepmom. In the, uh, I don't say this about ladies, but that's some kihonis. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, I, I like the cut of her chip. Like, my belt knows no limits. Oh, you're going to I don't care it. how old you are, <laughs> and I don't care who you are. You're kind of my son, or if you're my son. So she's been a stepmom for 13 years. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, the uh, victim has been living with her for three months. So she, what, she, what happened? She calls him after midnight and asks him to decide his punishment for missing curfew his choices either tell his father or take the licks he chose licks so the victim chose uh and and when he arrived 30 minutes uh after she hit him 11 times in the butt with the belt police said he told the stepmom to stop but she refused saying he had 19 more blows coming jesus and uh she admits to hitting her steps in 30 times but denied he ever told her to stop she said she, he just asked how many more blows he had left and now she is charged with domestic battery. There's something mm. else to this story, right? How old? What you said? He's he was 26. In his 20s? He's 26. 26. She's 42. There, there sounds. How like, does she have dominion over? I, him? I feel like there may be a sexual component here. There's God certainly willing. some tension. You know, drop your pants. <laughs> yeah, there's there's over unspoken my, things. Uh, there's an unspoken yeah. sexual energy to this relationship. Yeah, yeah a woman spanks her stepson with a belt for breaking curfew. That that's a porn. He never title. said stop. That's right. Trying yeah, to I'd think if uh, <laughs> see, I was twenty six. It's a probably, trending category. <laughs> probably living with the Ralph and Cortland and La Crescent. I'm trying to think if Lynn called me and said, "Hey, you should come by our house in <laughs> Valley Village because uh, the word is you've been coming home pretty late." <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> trying to think what that conversation yeah. would even be like. You know, like, you can tell your dad. <laughs> It's talking to them. Or well, there, the look, I, there's a lot of similarities here because for for the Ace Man because I was hit, you know, two times by other people's parents, as as has been well documented on the show. Roberta was one of them. One was a woman. The only time my dad ever was ever ever spanked me is he gave me a choice of sitting in my room. And being grounded for three or four hours, or taking oh. taking a spanking. He was chose, praying for the room too. It chose the spanking. So you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of elements here that um, right, I can really. identify. Did, did your with. parents do any spanking? Or no, uh, they did no. It, it's a weird. It's it's kind of a, they were totally consistent in that they had no involvement in their <laughs> kid's life, and spanking <laughs> is kind of a calorie burner. Like you have to think. First off, they're not physical people, and they're not aggressive people, and they're not violent people. But also, it's like whatever you say about corporal punishment, there's a certain amount of engagement there. Like you have to get <laughs> up, and you have to care about yep. something, and you have to go, what? Who ate all the cupcakes? Or what? Who, who borrowed my car? Like wh who j went joyriding? Or like what's, what time's curfew? Or like well, look at these grades. Look at these grades. These grades are horrible. Look at this report card. My parents didn't care about anything so there wasn't any reason nothing provoked a spanking because mm. who who cared you know that it is, yeah, we, you have to have an engagement you know what i mean we were spanked so much i'm pretty sure my mom had tommy john surgery from <laughs> really oh from just god. spanking you oh my god okay. yeah. and she had four kids so, the well, tendon I mean, took out of one elbow but wow yeah, it was bad yeah well, the anticipation uh, before getting spanked was just the oh there was thing. there was no anticipation uh, it was you got it right there yeah I got no spanking, but I also got no dinner, so it balanced out quite nicely. <laughs> oh, we got fed. No, it was an Italian family. We got fed nice after mm -hmm. the spanking. My mom would feed me hot sauce if I ever talked back. Oh, Just really? A spoonful oh, of hot sauce. That's a good idea. Mm. It's terrible. How Tessa often did you spicy. do that? Yeah, oh. uh, it, it happened. I don't know, probably a few times a year. Or I would. Or another thing she would do is she would make me kneel on a grill. Mm. Oh, not a lit grill. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> not, not a lit grill. Christ. No, not, not a lit grill. A, uh, just a grill. Yeah, just a grill. Yeah, you great. stay there yeah. for, uh, great for a while. Yeah. Just on the knees. Yeah. Wow. Bare-legged. Is, is hot sauce not a big part of Filipino uh, like cooking? It is. That's why we had so much of it. Uh, but I, I, never, <laughs> I never wanted it. Yeah. All you right. Build up a tolerance to it, huh? <clears throat> yeah. So where was it on the Scoville scale? I know. It wasn't. It wasn't anywhere near your hot one. Two million. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was a DJ Khaled. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so uh, two years ago, uh, T Terrell Thomas died in jail. He's a Milwaukee man. He w What happened was he died of dehydration after jailers shut off water oh. to his cell. My grandma said it's Terrell. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, it, it is Terrell. So anyway, he, the family has just been paid $6.75 million in a settlement. And uh, this is just a crazy story because what happened was the th three officers – 
He, what he did is he clogged the toilet. Uh, I was going to say, like, that's just a problem with our society. Like, everyone's suing everyone after this, but you don't randomly shut the water off to a cell mm-hmm. unless somebody's doing something that you want them to stop doing, that yeah. they won't stop doing. So, so what was he doing? So he, he clogs the toilet, and uh, he was moved to another cell, and the sheriff's office ordered that his water be cut off. But the person who cut off the water didn't know that they just meant the toilet water. So they cut off all the water. Uh-huh. And seven days later, they found him dead. Jesus. Um, the, yeah. It, and so they he, don't have any. Well, what did he do? By the way, look, if he murdered someone good. Charged with reckless endangerment and felony firearms violations mm-hmm. after he fired Nothing. shots in a local casino. Oh, look, you could have been happy you won. Celebrate <laughs> yeah. the way they're going to celebrate. <laughs> But they well, can drink. Yosemite <laughs> Sam is a hero. Yeah. Back off. <laughs> There's uh, water in general pop, right? When they let him out during the day. I'm, I'm trying to think of how this worked. He was not able to communicate yeah, with so anybody inmate, that the sink didn't work? Yeah, other inmates testified that they heard the 38-year-old begging for water for days. No Jail one officials, checked? Yeah, said they were unaware of the water to a cell had been turned off. Uh, they didn't check. That's yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so the jail administrator, Nancy Evans, she... Uh, is also being accused of hiding footage of them turning the water off. She didn't tell investigators about the footage when asked. You gotta hide everything when someone's dead. I mean, yeah, I, in, yeah. in your prison, hide, hide the, everything. The body, first of all. So she Still, was, she's been sentenced to nine months in jail. I uh, I'd like to go out and have drinks with uh, Aaron Andrews' uh, lawyer, her lawyer, her law team, mm-hmm. because we figured out she got oh some absurd amount, fifty nice or forty. Forty or fifty-five or something for being mil- exposed to super hot. Uh, Also, I'm not even sure. Like the the guy who ran the Holiday Inn, they didn't film her. They just said she's in 21B mm. or whatever. Like right. they didn't they didn't go. Oh, I can I have a yeah. universal key card. I can get you into the bathroom. Like they all they did was run a hotel. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they were just there. They're just. Place, they're basically the there. The guy they got sued for millions and millions of dollars. But I'm just saying, this guy's dead because he died of dehydration. Mm-hmm. He gets six point seven. What again? Uh, the family got six point seven five million dollars. But Aaron is alive and and boning a producer right now, and she got <laughs> some fifty tens of million dollars. Yeah. She really got that much. She got. You find, Aaron Andrews got over. I, I was guessing like 35, and it was like 55. It's like 55, and she's still alive. 55, mm-hmm. still alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, one more. All right, Adam, I know how much you love Nerd Rage. I love Nerd Rage. We did uh, video games on Rotten Tomatoes last week, and, or this week. So, so my theory, lo- loosely based on growing up with my mom and her friends, um, the hippies are super rageful, mm-hmm. and that's why they're all like, they do that move where they like, put the flower, the daisies in the barrels of the guns of the army guys. And, and then 10 seconds later, they're screaming, get that camera out of here. Give, give me some muscle in here. All the super hippie crunchy chicks right beneath the v- the veneer of like free love and let your freak flag mm-hmm. fly and we don't judge is unabashed rage, rage. And nerds are the same way. Underneath the stupid haircuts and the dumb outfits and, oh, we love Star Wars and all this other bullshit and uh, all this... uh, But you loved Richard Kim. All all that, all the... He, oh, no, he wasn't even a nerd. He didn't, even, he didn't like Star Wars he or anything. He was wearing the wrong pants and had the wrong uh, barber but briefcase <laughs> right beneath nerd is rage and they're always accusing the jocks of being the the angry ones the jocks are so busy getting laid <laughs> they're never angry they're always depleted of semen and never and they're always in the refractory period they're not rageful the nerds are rageful and the and the hippies up. yeah and the and the the super like look who's Alyssa Milano, so angriest person on the planet, mm-hmm. and she's the one who weeps for her daughter every night. Like all the super crunchy ones are the most rageful people there are. Can you imagine if these people actually had muscles, no and strength? But if they had muscles and strength, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have rage. To be That's nerd. where it came uh, from. Some of them are getting there, though. When you think, when you look, look at what's going. Uh, the guy that owns Amazon, he's getting muscles. Bezos, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm worried about these nerds. Hey. Vinny, if he took a swing at you, it'd be the best day of your fucking life. You, <laughs> yeah, you, you would lean into that punch. <laughs> if that guy made contact. Oh, yeah. 
and you I, would take the fall. And you wouldn't move <laughs> until you had the full neck brace on and you're strapped down to the gurney and you're giving, body a, giving a thumbs up to everyone else at the <laughs> farmer's market when they're pulling you out. You, that, that'd be the, this incident <laughs> takes place at the farmer's market? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah, yeah Vinny's sense. over there. getting the, He's going to get some whole peanuts <laughs> to process himself at home. Yeah, and and Bezos, like, those are a whole lot cheaper on Amazon. He's over there with this new lady and doesn't like that you're out of the house shopping. Right. He likes you at home on the computer and words are exchanged. <laughs> yeah. He takes a swing and then you make Aaron Andrews blush with the kind of payday you get. Mm. Mm-hmm. You lean into that. Mm-hmm. All right, well, anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog, mm-hmm. a beloved video game character, has a movie coming out. It was uh, supposed to hit oh, theaters in November. The nerds are mad. Oh, they're mad. So what happened is it's directed by a guy named Jeff Fowler. He won the Academy Award in 2004 for Best Animated Short, and now he's, this is his theatrical debut. And he, they put the first trailer up for the movie, and the internet mm-hmm. just went ablaze over the way Sonic looked. Oh. So if so, they didn't. They just didn't like his look. He looks a little too human. He doesn't look cartoony enough. He doesn't look like the video game enough. So everybody was complaining. So what happened was Jeff gets on Twitter, and he writes, "Thank you for the support and the criticism. The message is loud and clear. You aren't happy with the design, and you want changes. It's going to happen. Everyone at Paramount and Sega are fully committed to making this character the best he can be. And now the movie's being pushed back to February mm. of next year, so they can." Re CGI Sonic. All, yes! all of Sonic. <laughs> Jeez, I, who has thoughts about this? I don't even know you just how. You got your asses whipped. I don't know how good this by movie. By a bunch of goddamn nerds. <laughs> it's gonna be. I mean, it, James Marsden's in it. Jim Carrey's playing uh, the villain. Ben Schwartz, who I love, is uh, the voice of Sonic. Great cast. I mean. I say it all the time. In a world where the Lego movie can be spectacular, anything's on the table. That said, I'm selling my shares of Sonic. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, let's bring it home. That's the news. I'm Chris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, spank me. <laughs> that was the news on the Adam Carolla Show. You get out there and kneel on a grill. I'll oh, get well. the Tabasco for that performance. <laughs>